All right, what's going on, Insane Gamers, and more importantly, Tyler, all the lookers out there. It's your boy, Yo Soy, AC Weezy, the man goddamn. Hand up, T. 100% my fault for uh, running a little late today. I was at Ralph's trying to get some grocery shopping done. On my way home, encounter a little traffic, but we're here. We're ready. We got a good episode for today. Didn't forget anything off the good old grocery <laughs> list, did we? No, no, I got it all. I got my, my veggie burgers. I got my frozen fruits for the smoothie. Um, what else did I get? Peanut butter powder. You know, those are the essentials right there. Some avocados. I mean, I could go on for Av days. Avocados. Now you're truly a Californian. <laughs> I mean, I was on, you know, I was on the avocado grind for a while. I tried making Tyler an avocado smoothie <laughs> <laughs> when he was up in New York. But it was the only ingredient I had, so it just looked like green slime. Like I've never been more alien. disgusted <laughs> of avocados in my life, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, you live and you learn, and now we're laughing about it, right? Tyler wasn't laughing when he was trying to choke it down until he finally worked up the courage and said, I'm not eating this shit. I'm not drinking it. And he's, I'm like, yeah, you're good. I I'm going to gut through it because I'm hungry and there's nothing else in the cabin, but... There we go. Anyways, today, we got NF or, uh, excuse me, we got NBA, NBA playoffs, right? Regular season wrapped up yesterday. We got a new and improved, I guess you could say, Tyler, playoff bracket. First time ever. There's going to be four separate playing games, which start tomorrow. Um, I guess without further ado, we'll dive straight into it. So tomorrow night, Tyler, Charlotte Hornets at the Indiana Pacers, Washington Wizards at Boston Celtics. Who do we like? Why? Are there X factors? Are there things that we're not seeing on the surface we should look out for? So you said Wizards versus Celtics? Uh, correct. Wizards. Um, so the first game is uh, Hornets, Pacers at 3. Well, I got PST, so <laughs> 630 uh, EST, and then the Wizards at Celtics, 9 EST. I mean, I see an upset here, um, and I'm going to go back to, like I said last week, Washington, Wizards. I mean, Russell Westbrook on a tear. Uh, averaging a triple-double throughout the, the NBA season. And not trying to veer off, but when you look at the MVP race, it just pisses me off even more that Russell Westbrook isn't it isn't even in top 10. Yeah. He isn't even in consideration. This guy's averaging a triple-double, and everybody's like, yeah, it's Russell. It's Russell. He does that. Um, but I want to see, not only because I hate the Celtics, but I want to see the Wizards absolutely dismantle the Celtics. Um Bradley Beal come out and ball. Russell Westbrook do what he does. And then, of course, in the other game, Indiana, uh, kind of a sleeper throughout the whole entire season. But I'm very excited to see uh, LaMelo Ball playoff Mello uh, is back. And it's not Carmelo, but it's Mello. LaMelo Ball. He's going to yeah. be balling out, I think. So I'm excited to see how, how the Hornets play against the Pacers. So um, as we found out, I guess, on uh, on the podcast last week, the 7-8 matchup, you can still lose and you're still in. So Celtics versus Wizards, the loser of that goes on to play the winner of the other two. So Tyler, you and I are kind of in the same boat, I believe. Russell Westbrook, you know, he's breaking, what, 50-year-old, you know, NBA records, you know, averaging a triple-double, not just a triple-double, like 2011-11. Like he's not teetering on the border of 10 and... 9.9 .9. he's like obliterating that um bradley beal is back playing he's healthy those guys can go off any given night combined for like you know 100 points 80 probably a little more realistic but you know what i'm saying on the other end of it jalen brown right last week or so uh got injured he's now out for the season i think a lot is going to be put on jason tatum especially kemba walker too i mean jason tatum there's no denying he's an up-and-coming star in this league. He could be the new face of the league at some point. Kemba, he's going to have to prove why they paid him that money. You know, they got some support guys that are going to have to step up. If, if it's Jalen Brown is playing Tyler in this series, I, I think you got to give the hand to the Celtics just because of how deep they are on that roster. I mean, now they're going to have to put in Taco Fowl at some point, I feel like, just to get the crowd energy going. Um, I'm going to have to agree with you for this one. I think the I think the Wizards take it. 
and they move on to play Brooklyn, which, <laughs> I mean, good luck with that. Uh, That's kind of scary, not going to lie. Didn't yeah. even think about that. Didn't think that one through. From the, from the, like, the perspective of a so, Nets fan? So honestly, if I'm a Nets fan, now I'm going to be rooting for the Celtics because then the Celtics would face the Nets, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I want the Celtics to win. <laughs> Yeah, I um, mean, I mean, the, the Wizards got to be the scariest team in the Eastern playoff games right now, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I was thinking about it when you were talking, and I could honestly see the Wizards and also the Celtics getting into the NBA fi- or NBA playoffs um, through the playing games. You know, say whoever loses in the Wizards-Celtics game goes on to face whoever, you know, wins Pacers-Hornets. I could see, you know, either one of those teams – you know, moving on against those those teams, just being a little bit stronger than than them. Um, but now that you say it, uh, go Celtics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tyler's gonna be kneeling beneath his bed or beside his bed before he goes to sleep, praying for Jason Tatum to go off. But in the other game, Tyler, like you said, the Pacers. Uh, I don't know how, but they're always consistent every year. It's like they don't you don't even know who they have. I don't even think they have Thaddeus Young or any of these guys anymore. Like. Is Karis yeah, Levert? Yeah. Is Karis Levert playing now? They got uh, Sabonis. Yeah. Obviously, is probably their main player. Um, I mean, Karis Levert's averaging twenty twenty five a game. Dude's absolutely balling right now. No, oh, yeah, I get that, but I don't know. You got Lamelo Ball back, which I mean, you got to factor in Tyler. If if Lamelo was playing all those games he missed, the Hornets might be, you know, the eight seed right now. Obviously, they squeaked in at the ten. Uh, Terry Rozier is playing good ball. Miles Bridges, all those guys. I, I would have to give them the win for that. But then, I mean, we're looking at the winner of Celtics versus Wizards. I, I think both those teams are deservedly playoff teams, right? The seven and the eight seed, which in years past format would automatically be in the playoffs. I think they should both make it as well, no matter who comes out of the other game. So my question to you is if both the seven and eight seeds make it in the play, playing game this year in one conference or in both, because it's quite possible in both. Honestly, I think it's more possible in the West than it is the East. But if that happens, does the NBA just be like, <laughs> you know what, we tried something yeah. new. Yeah, let's scrap this idea because it's not worth it. I mean, now that you're saying that, it's almost like, you know, my third eye is opening up. Uh, sports are rigged. Adam Silver, he doesn't want both <laughs> seven and eight seeds to make it or else this whole format is garbage. I mean, the whole format is garbage, Tyler. I think, yeah, like you said, probably more possible or probable in the West. But I even feel confident in, in the East as well. I don't think they squash it after one year. Could it be cool? Because, I mean... I'd say it would have been better if the Warriors got an 8 or 9 seed, Tyler, and they win two games. Then they get in, they beat Utah, right? They upset the number one seed. That could have made this super cool. But since they're in the 8 seed, you know, I mean, if you want to get into it right now, I think the Lakers are going to win that handily, you know, pretty easily. Um, And then the Warriors go on to play the winner of Memphis, San Antonio. But, I mean, watch out. Steph is playing good ball. You got a Utah Jazz seed, or a number one seed overall. Utah Jazz team is what I meant to say. Playing good ball, obviously, 52-20 and 20 on the season. But if you talk about playoff experience and you know guys who shine bright in the big moments, you cannot overlook Steph and the, the Golden State Warriors. I mean, Steph's coming off of a uh, scoring champion, second time in his career. Uh, he's hotter than the fucking sun right now uh average i mean he's averaging 25 later on in the season he's been averaging like 40s and 50s it's been crazy um like you said i agree nobody's stopping play up ron right now um dude is just coming out after 17th consecutive season of average averaging 25 no other player in the nba history has done that um and there's three things that are certain in life that taxes and lebron winning in the playoffs and then losing in the finals. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I mean, maybe Cleveland Braun, but yeah. Well, I mean, Miami he's, he's Braun lost, is. He's lost more, lost more finals than he's won. Um, well, maybe. No, yeah, yes, okay. Um, but no, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree because he's been to ten and he's only won four. Four, okay, yeah. Um, Book math. But no, playoff Braun gonna beat the Warriors, and honestly, shit pump of the fucking playing game. 
Warriors versus whoever. It doesn't even matter. Oh, Steph Curry's going to be pissed. Then you get, you know, Steph Curry versus the the Jazz. And hey, your your uh, blow up of the uh, first first overall seed right there. Warriors over the Jazz. I could see that happening. I could see that happen, hundred percent, Tyler. But so you're not giving any credit. I mean, I look at this Memphis team, number nine. Um, Wow, I did, there's there's a huge gap actually. Memphis finished at 38 and 34 at the nine seed. Spurs only 33 and 39. There's a there's a huge gap right there between those two guys. I think Memphis is gonna handle that pretty easily. But you don't think if like you know Curry's still banged up. He's playing out of his mind right now. He's putting the team on his back. But they go you know back to back games, quick turnaround against a young fresh John Morant. You know. Dylan Brooks, like all those guys, you don't, you don't give them any credit? I mean, I'm putting my money on Steph Curry all day, especially going into the playoffs. Everybody's been counting this team out all year. Um, now they're coming on hot. Uh, they're playing the way they should. And I, I think Steph Curry is, is just the best shooter of all time, obviously. But, you know, him in the playoffs is a different beast. And he's going to do whatever it takes to win. Uh, you saw it at Davidson. You see it in Golden State. I think, you know, Steph Curry easily handles uh, the Grizzlies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it's probably the safe bet. If you're going to put some money on it, I'd say I'd agree with you. Go Warriors as well. Um, so now, Tyler, I just had a train of thought. We were talking about this and that. And, okay, yeah, I got it now. We were talking about MVP and how Westbrook got snubbed. What do you think about Curry? Obviously... I mean, last week we showed the the top 10 guys they had on that website, and a lot of the guys, at least three of them, only played you know 40 to 50 games this season. So I guess you could speculate that was the reason why Steph wouldn't be put in this conversation. But the stuff he's doing in this past, past month, at least, do you think he got snubbed a little bit from not being in the MVP race? I, I, I do. I mean, especially in my theory of Russell Westbrook not getting it, uh, I feel like the NBA puts a little too much on their team performance rather than a single player's performance. Where if you look at just for instance like college basketball, you got guys in the NCAA tournament who you know average you know 30 or in in the regular season who average like 30 a game. They're playing for a fucking shit mid major, but they're still like most valuable player in all of the NCAA. I think they need to to kind of use that. Like, if this guy is playing above average, regardless of any team that he's playing for, you know, below 500, at 500, they need to take that into consideration. You got to respect greatness. Averaging mm-hmm. a triple double, you know, scoring the most three pointers in a single month in NBA history, almost, and he's, you know, less than 73s away probably from beating Ray Allen. You got to appreciate greatness. I think, you know, LeBron gets snubbed often. Now you got Curry because they're used to it. And now Russell Westbrook, which is the biggest abomination of them all. Yeah. So we talk playing games. We got those going on tomorrow and then Wednesday. We want to get into the first round. I mean, I didn't know how deep you plan on getting today in the playoff uh, picks, I guess, if you want to call it. I mean, I think we should wait till the playing games are over. That way we can kind of see who's who because how... We've been wrong before, and I could definitely see my shit pumping game of the week uh, getting. <laughs> I mean, how many pick. times has your shit pumping game of the week actually come to fruition? I feel like it's quite the opposite. I can count <laughs> on less than one hand, probably. <laughs> um, I'm like, what's his face from Happy Gilmore? Uh, he's got the like the finger, the the two fingers jumps. or what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't get the the. Uh, That's how many times I could count a uh, shit, uh, shit pumping game of the week. I got gotcha. you. You lost me for a second. I didn't know what happened to your hand, but you still got all your fingers, right? Yes. All right. So we got the playing games. All right. We'll we'll wait to give our predictions for the first I will round. Say, the Knicks. <laughs> I don't know that face you got going on, but I yeah. think I I think I like the. Uh, Knicks. The tone you're trying to set. I mean, hey, Knicks locked up the number four seed, Tyler. I called it. I said if they got that four seed or even the five seed and played the Hawks, I think they might be able to pull this one out. And also... I mean, I, there you go. No, I, my, my point wasn't too relevant. But I mean, the if there's any team that you want to face as the Knicks, it's definitely the Hawks. You know, get the playoff juices 
flowing, you know, get it all the butterflies out of your system. You know, they'll probably lose two or three, maybe one. Um, I could see definitely two games lost against the Hawks, but you know, this Knicks team is is playing really well. And if Julius Randle can stay up to, you know, the way he was playing in the regular season, along with um, uh, Emmanuel Quickly's up for uh, top rookie of the year, um, mm-hmm. then you got R.J. Barrett. I mean, this team's scary. D. Rose, I mean, the resurrection of Derrick Rose is probably the, the greatest thing we've seen all season. Um, but might I add, I did say last episode that I think the Nets are going to win all four. And what they do, they pulled off. The, the the final sweep of the season won all four games to finish off the season, yeah. which was big. Well, talk about winning all four and winning uh, basketball games. Remember that tweet? The guy tweeted Dame Lillard. I mean, this was probably 10 games ago. He said, hey, I need the, the Trailblazers to win 42 games this season or else I lose my house. Uh, Blazers, I'm not sure how many they won. They probably won 8 out of 10. They were on a hot streak for a while. Ended up right at 42. Now you got Dame on Twitter, you know, replying to the guy like, hey, I want to see this ticket. We pulled it <laughs> out for you, guy. I want to see the ticket. Maybe get a little little residuals, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting playing games. I mean, shit. LeBron versus Steph in the first playing game, Tyler, even if both 7 and 8 seeds do make it from both conferences. I think that's a success in its own right there. I mean, who would have thought back in like 2013, 2014, 2015 that we would see a playing game, let alone versus LeBron and Steph Curry to make it into the actual playoffs? Not me. No, I, I couldn't fathom that. So that would be interesting to watch. Switching gears a little bit, Tyler, still talking basketball. One thing that I know you were pretty adamant you want to get into We had the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies over the weekend. I mean, a lot of emotions, man. Obviously, it's an emotional night for everyone involved. A little bit extra emotional when, you know, you're talking Kobe. He's got his new exhibit there now. Vanessa was up there. Uh, MJ, obviously. What what was your takeaways, and what do you think this ranks as far as, like, all-time induction years? Because, I mean, you had... Kobe, KG, Tim Duncan, right? Plus the other guys. <laughs> I know the other yeah, guys. Yeah, I were... mean, I mean Tamika Ketchins, who was a WNBA great. I mean, I don't know much about uh, WNBA, but I remember Tamika Ketchins being up there. But I mean, honestly, probably one of the best Hall of Fame in- inductions of all time. Uh, obviously, fresh on the brain, but you know, you have Michael Jordan saying a few words about Kobe. Uh, which was which was nice, and then obviously Vanessa with the ULG to Kobe, you know, saying that he finally did it. Uh, it's just sad, you know. Obviously, you wish Kobe could have seen that, you know, throughout his his career. He knew he was an MVP regardless, but or a, a Hall of Famer regardless. But you know, it's still something that you would wish. Uh, I love the the exchange between Tim Duncan and Pop, you know. Mm-hmm. Tim Duncan saying that, you know, Pop was a, a coach that did more than any other NBA coach in terms of out, outside of basketball, off the basketball court. Um, and just their relationship, you know, throughout the NBA, uh, throughout his career, just because they played together forever. Um, it was it was very nice. And honestly, uh, I think one of the best classes of all time, if not the best. Yeah, I'd have to put it up there as well. One thing I liked about it, I'm not sure if they're all first ballot, I'm assuming so, but, you know, you talk about KG, Kobe, and Tim Duncan. I mean, they played around each other. I'm not going to say together. Maybe in, like, the All-Star games or whatnot. But, they, you know, they battled for years. So you saw in their speeches, you know, KG shouting out Kobe and Tim, you know, respect to them while they're in the same class. I mean, you know, they have stories that they're talking about. So I thought that was cool to where they could really relate to each other. You know, sometimes you get like a first ballot guy and then someone that's been there, you know, 10 years past who played in a complete different decade. And so it's not really as much interaction between the induct- I feel inductees. Like, I feel like they're starting to get away from that, though. Um, the past few Hall of Fames have been guys that, you know, retired around the same time and usually played around the same time, to not together, but during their tenure in the NBA, um, where you're not seeing, like, guys that were fucking 1975 point guard that averaged 10 points and 15 assists. You know, you're not seeing that. Um, It's pretty much guys that were drafted with each other, which is nice because, you know, it it ends that era and 
you know, begins the new one. Um, speaking of the new one, the the new dra- or the new NBA Hall of Fame for next year was released. You got Chris Webber. Um, oh. You got uh, Ben Wallace, which I I mm-hmm. love. Big Ben was one of my favorite. I'm missing the third one. Chris Webber, Ben Wallace. Let's see. I'm gonna help you out in two seconds. I know Lauren Jackson was another one in the WNBA. Uh, you got Rick Alderman, who was a great NBA coach. Uh, Bill Russell as uh, a Paul coach. Paul Pierce, Chris Bosh, Chris Webber, Ben Wallace, uh, Rick Edelman, Jay Wright, Bill Russell. As Yolanda a coach. Yolanda Griffin. Yeah, yeah. And then Lauren Jackson. Yeah, it's it's a solid one. I, I don't think it compares to this year. I mean... I think those... I think all of them are deserved, obviously. Um, Paul Pierce. I mean, <laughs> hold on. Before we go off, <laughs> like, do we even view Paul Pierce as an NBA player anymore, an ex-NBA player? I just look at this guy as, like, a walking meme now. Ever since this whole Instagram Live when he's smoking, now he's got his own strain of weed, and he just doesn't give a fuck. I mean, you got to compliment him from that aspect. But, I mean, is he going to be up there high as shit given his Hall of Fame inductee speech and... <laughs> just like say hey try out my new strain of <laughs> of thc thc the truth yeah. um <laughs> uh, no but i mean i think i think maybe this was part of his plan like he was like i know i'm gonna be you know an nba hall of famer or maybe it was just a crazy coincidence that all this seemed to happen at the same time i'm surprised that this hasn't ruined his uh, hall of fame you know try like it did Barry Bonds in the MLB, right. you know? It's just like, or even Pete Rose. Pete Rose bets on his team, but Paul Pierce can have strippers and cocaine going on in the background, you know, growing weed and fucking booze and shit like that. I mean, yeah, he, he probably he probably got lucky with the timing on that one because it was probably around the same time they were deciding on it that the he had that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting. But do you think that's by, like you said, you feel like that's happening more often? Um, click my camera real quick. I feel like it's getting close to that shutoff time. But uh, you said you feel like there's more inductees being put in the same class that play around the same time. Do you think that's by design? Because I feel like there's really no way to control that. If you have a guy... I don't know what the process is. They vote for the for the candidates or No, I mean I think that's a little bit by design where they're like well, they have to wait a certain amount of years after they retire, of course, and then they mm-hmm. become eligible. And a lot of guys are just first ballot, like Kobe, KG, Tim Duncan, we're all first ballot. Those guys are obviously going in. Um Rick Edelman Adelman, excuse me, uh that's going in next year that was a coach, or you know, Bill Russell as a coach. Those might be a little bit like further out than when they actually retired, especially Bill Russell. But for players, I feel like a lot of the times it's it's usually right around the same time that they all retire around. Um, I mean, if you look at it, I think Chris Bosh and Paul Pierce retired the same year. Um, ben Wallace, obviously, a little bit beforehand. But I, I like it, though. I think it what it does is it, it just brings an era together and, and concludes it. You know, so I, I just feel like I don't understand the concept. Like you said, yeah, you gotta wait X amount of years, but I'm trying to think of an example. You know, say, um, we're gonna use it like anyone, anyone in today's game, we'll say like Jimmy Butler, okay? Say, you know, he's on the borderline. Maybe Hall of Fame career. You say he, you know, he wins a couple championships. He, you could have the conversation. So he's eligible, and then he's on the ballot. He doesn't get voted in that year. Is he then just automatically on the ballot, or like until he gets put in, or is there a certain amount of times you get denied and you you can't? Because it's like, how do you have that many people eligible and you know you're not voted in, but like you just keep going on every year? Is that what it is? Is it like, okay, now I'm kind of talking myself into it. So you have this whole <laughs> pool of people that are eligible. I'll let you talk yourself into it. Right? I mean, hear me out a little bit. I'm probably talking circles, but so I'm guessing there's this whole pool of people that are eligible and then people vote out of that pool. Yeah. That's probably what it is. Okay. No, that's definitely what it is. And then. So there's not you know, only a certain amount of people that are eligible for that year. I don't think in basketball. 
they they say, oh, you've been you haven't been voted X amount of times, maybe like ten or five or something like that, yeah. and then you basically get thrown out. But you know, I feel like if you're a, uh, a Hall of Famer or are in consideration, you're gonna get voted in at some point. Yeah, I mean, there's guys so. in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> there's guys in the Hall of Fame in the NBA that I feel like mm, questionable. Maybe shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. You know, NFL. I feel like they're their NFL Hall of Fame guys are very deserving of it because they have so many players and, you know, the best of the best really get into the Hall of Fame where I feel like NBA, Chris Webber, really, I mean, yeah. never won a championship. Right. I, I feel like to get into the Hall of Fame, you have to win a championship or come close to it. I mean, yeah, he came close one year, but lost to Kobe and the Lakers. <laughs> Just because yeah, he's a great I player. I mean, I don't see it. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, talking Chris Webber. Chris Webber is the uh, the exact equivalent in my mind to Matthew Stafford in the NFL. <laughs> I was just gonna Tell say. Wrong. I was just gonna say. I was gonna say for the NFL Hall of Fame, Matthew Stafford's gonna get in as like a fucking twenty seventh ballot, like fifty <laughs> years later. I don't even know. Watch him break some of the records, though. I mean, I could see Matthew Stafford breaking some of those records, especially in L.A. Now. What do you like all time records or? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's th- he has a lot of fucking yards passing. I could definitely see that one. Maybe not touchdowns. Tom Brady's going to probably run that one into the ground until he dies. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be... If he doesn't die on the field wearing that number 12 <laughs> uniform, something's wrong with the world because that's just, at this point, <laughs> I think he's just going to run his body into the ground. So, Tyler, we're talking a little bit of football. We're, we're 30 minutes into the episode. I know you said you weren't too crazy about getting in the NFL, but we got some time, honey. And guess what? The schedules just came out. Packers, Raiders, everyone else. I'm gonna pull this up real quick. I think I think we gotta we gotta we owe it to ourselves and the viewers to at least speak on the topic. I know you weren't probably mentally or emotionally ready to get in this whole Raiders ordeal, but hey. Talk about ordeals. I mean, if if there's a bigger thing going on in the NFL world than Aaron Rodgers, please notify me because no shot, Bucko. I mean, how do you feel about them signing another quarterback? I, it's easy. They usually roster like four or five in training camp, and you know, two or three make the active roster. But they already had people on the practice squad, right? Typically, they have like. Uh, uh, one or two quarterbacks on the practice squad. Hear me out. But they went out of their way to sign another quarterback. I'm just saying. What do you mean out of their way? Like you're they acting like it's have, a, they didn't have to sign him right before. You know they didn't do anything. Roger, what? How how did they not? With uh, they only saying. they only had Jordan Love was the only active quarterback on the roster. Blake Bortles, they signed Blake Bortles. No, I'm saying before Bortles and Ben huh. Kirk. I get that, but then you have typically on reserve one to two guys on the practice squad. They probably ha- already have a. a I don't guy think they the did really. Squad. Okay, regardless if they didn't, <laughs> I feel like this is the worst time to start signing quarterbacks or people of the same position of your star player who says, hmm, "I don't really want to come back." What are you talking about? They had no option. I mean, if they don't know what's going on, people got to do their job and act like, you know, there is a possibility Rodgers doesn't play for him. So what are you going to wait until Rodgers gives him his decision? I mean, he's like, Rodgers is being like all of our friends right now. They don't want to commit to anything. So they're going to, he's going to wait fucking weeks until someone reaches out individually and says, yo, you down? He's like, yeah, all right, I'll play. I'll play this season. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't get back to you, you know? (laughs) <laughs> it has some other stuff saying, going on. Rodgers has already made his decision, right? So now it's the GMs, the owners, uh, even you have to make your decision on what you're going to do with Rodgers. Instead, you go out of your way to sign another quarterback. I'm just saying coincidence, you know, bad timing. Make no really, sense, though. I make plenty of sense. They would have done this whether this there was a Rodgers issue or not, just because... You're thinking but, about it. It's like it's like when you when you're thinking about something, like you hook up with a chick, right? And you didn't wear protection, and then you start seeing all these baby ads, right? Fucking diapers. 
You're not seeing more diaper ads. Your mind is just a lot more aware of those things because it's on your mind. I feel like a lot of cognitive dissonance is happening right now with you, Austin. All I'm saying is Adam Schefter would not be putting out tweets and Instagram posts about this random kung fu fuck guy out of Atlanta to go into the Packers if Aaron Rodgers was already committed to this season. That's all I'm saying. Do you understand where I'm coming from now? You know what? I actually, speaking <laughs> of Schefter, you never believe what I got for this fucking guy. Fuck you, Schefter. <laughs> Take all your phones you got. Fucking stuff them in a garbage <laughs> disposal. Make sure the water's running so you don't jam it and just Fuck. If there's anybody that doesn't want Aaron Rodgers to come back, it's Adam Schefter. <laughs> yeah, because he wants to stay relevant, and he wants to say, Oh, I called it. I called it. I, I, I make it believe that I'm strong, and I was benching 225 when really they had fucking cardboard plates on there. I'm Adam Schefter. <laughs> Fuck out of here, buddy guy. Are we going to get into the schedules or what? I, I, I guess so. I was having a good time, though. Yeah, because it was at my expense. When we, when whenever we the turn the time. tables on you, watch, watch viewers at home, watch, uh, watch all the mood shifts on Tyler when we start talking about the Raiders. Tyler, we got the schedule 2021. They open up against Baltimore, Steelers, Dolphins, Chargers, Bears, Broncos, Eagles, Giants, Chiefs, Bengals, Cowboys. Washington football team, Chiefs, Browns, Broncos, Colts, Chargers. Is it fair to say we have the hardest schedule in the NFL? Uh, I mean, you got the Chiefs twice. I mean, that's right there. Oh, other, other than that, we got the Ravens, Steelers. Uh, no, I wouldn't Cowboys. say. I wouldn't say that you, the Cowboys. How are the Cowboys hard? They're going to be decent this year, but. If, if, like, last year proved anything, you can't say that. They didn't have Dak. They got MVP quarterback. They're re-bolstering their whole entire defense. They probably have some of the best wide receiver weapons. I mean, Amari Cooper is going to come out and shit on the Raiders single-handedly just to prove a point. All right. Where do you think the Raiders fall in the strength of schedule? Top 10, easily. If you had to guess exact Seven. number. Ah, pretty close. Technically Damn. you're not wrong. They're they're eight, but the Bengals and Lions are T six, so that was pretty good there. I'll give it to you. Um Packers. Wait, who's first? Uh so they go Steelers, Ravens, Bears, Packers, Vikings. Yeah, so fuck you, you can't even complain. Pack <laughs> Packers have a harder <laughs> schedule than them. Uh I'm just saying Reading off the list, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, could we have a less of a hard schedule? Well, you're kind of going to have that right now, just how competitive your division is with the Chiefs, right. now the Chargers. Uh, I don't know if you can count the Broncos. They're kind of a wild card, but... Well, if Rodgers goes there, I mean, fuck. Yeah, if that's Straight a big schedule if. number one. <laughs> <laughs> Get a little spuzz VR in there. Just, just seeing your face actually do that, <laughs> fucking, that was enough. I've, I've heard you, just, I've heard it that sound so many times, but seeing your face was the best. <laughs> just seeing all like how I over and not say. Psych, I lied. Your doonies are mine. <laughs> uh, Says every team in the NFL when they play the Raiders. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They're getting in on those walls deep. Um. So what do, what do we think? Favorite game? I mean, you want to give a, a record prediction? What are we, what are we uh, talking here? Well, my favorite game for the Raiders yeah, is yeah. going to be week two against the Steelers in Pittsburgh. I already texted my mom. She lives in Pittsburgh. I said, hey, yo, Raiders are playing. Trying to see your son and also <laughs> go to a football game. So – I might be going, I may not, but either way, I Steelers being my second favorite team growing up, because uh, I had family in Pittsburgh, uh, they were always trying that, to... The Bucks aren't even the second favorite team. <laughs> well, my family was always trying to make me a Steelers fan, they were always giving me Steelers shit, uh, taking me to Heinz Field sometimes, but 
Steelers versus Raiders. I always love seeing this game. I actually think we could possibly run away with it in Hines. So uh, that's going to be my favorite game for the Raiders this season, 100%. All right. Favorite also, game. Raiders play on Thanksgiving this year against the Cowboys. That's going to be lit, too. That's always great when your team plays on Thanksgiving because it's like you're into football, but it's like you're trying to justify it. I'm at Thanksgiving around family. Do I really need to watch the Cowboys versus the Giants? But this year, the Raiders are on, so you don't have to convince yourself of shit. You can say, you know, sorry, Mom, sorry, Dad, whoever. I'm, I'm watching the Raiders. I'm fully locked in. Let me get another slice of rhubarb pie in this bitch because it's going to be a good one. I mean, honestly, it probably doesn't make me feel as bad for as much food as I'm going to... Like, win or lose, I'm still going to be happy because it's Thanksgiving, my first, my second favorite holiday. Like, all the food in the world, all my favorites. You know, if the Raiders lose, I'll just stuff my face even more. What's uh, your first favorite holiday? Oh, Christmas, 100%. I don't, I don't really peg you for much of a Christmas guy, but all right. <laughs> Uh, so what do we think? What do we think record-wise? Obviously, they play 17 games this season. Do you have any sort of optimism, any kind of hope for the for the Las Vegas Raiders? I'm gonna go eight and nine. Um, right. I feel like I feel like that's kind of pushing. I do think we're gonna steal a game from the Chiefs. Definitely a game from the Broncos. Maybe both from the Broncos, depending on who their quarterback is. And then obviously a game from the Chargers. I think we'll have some, you know, sneaky wins, but you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. No off-season moves that put us above anybody else, or you know, I, I feel like we're just maintaining. You know, right. we're not, not, we're not taking that next step, unfortunately. So I'll, I'll go a nine. I feel like that's a fair assessment, and I, I feel like I should be treated as though I am not out of my fucking mind because I, I gave a fair. Uh, record to the Raiders. Well, from who? From anybody. No, I mean, I'd say that's that's pretty good. I mean, they could easily flip-flop a couple games, you know. I, I don't know. I, I feel like you're being a little overly harsh on them. I wouldn't be surprised if they got 10 wins this season. I, I wouldn't either. I just, they do have a tough schedule this year. Tougher there's, than There's usual. a lot that could go like 50-50, you know what I mean? Well, here's the problem. <clears throat> Raiders play to their opponents. So, I mean, hopefully we have a lot of great opponents this year. Maybe we play up to them. You know, obviously lose the shitty uh, the shitty games like against the Washington football team or the Giants. But, you know, beat a Chiefs team, beat a Cowboys team, beat a, a Ravens team. Uh, first game of the season, first game in, in Las Vegas with fans. So, I mean, that shit's going to be crazy. That'll I mean, last wild. year we, we beat the Saints – First game in Allegiant Stadium. I didn't think we were going to beat the Saints, but, you know, the Raiders pulled it off. I mean, they're going to have DJs there. The players are going to be on the field. Fucking, <laughs> yo, that's a sick mix. Get them all hyped up. <laughs> Bitches in the pool. Gotta have them. Gotta have the pool. I mean, come on. They're going to go down to the local strip club, get all the strippers, be like, yo, when we <laughs> score, you got to flash them titties, girl. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, the, the Raiders are gonna start instead of the wave. They're gonna have the fucking flash where you just forty thousand females in that stadium is gonna have areolas all over the whole place. It's gonna be an incentive to score a touchdown. The Raiders are gonna have the most touchdowns and still lose all the games. That should be a that should be a prop bet for the for the Raiders. Like how many how many titties are they gonna see if they win a game? Like now do you count? Under? Do you count a pair as as a titty or you know? That's, that's tough because if you yeah. do like a one that could be like yeah. i'd say that's half okay so if you set the line at like 57 and a half then you just need that's, like the one half. yeah gotcha. okay. <laughs> um so, all right we'll switch gears now packers as i mentioned tyler actually have the fourth hardest schedule so starting off they got the saints no drew Brees, but we'll see what happens with their qb situation lines Niners, Steelers, Bengals, Bears, Washington football team, Cardinals, Chiefs, Seahawks, Vikings, Rams, Bears, Ravens, Browns, Vikings, Lions. I mean, Tyler, they pretty much play every team that the Raiders play, except whereas the Raiders have easier games for the random ones, Packers have harder games. I mean, you're sprinkling in the Seahawks, or do they play that division? Yeah, they play that division. So you sprinkle in uh, the Ravens, Steelers, 
the Saints, I mean, you could say Drew Brees wasn't even at, you know, in full form last year when they were still a solid team that made it to the playoffs. So I can't really, I don't think you can say, like, discredit the Saints this year, whoever they have at quarterback. Uh, so, I mean, I guess sticking on par with what I was asking you, favorite game, definitely not against the Seahawks. Fuck them. Except DK. Uh, uh, they play the Rams, Tyler. If, if that was in LA, I would 100% be going to that game, except it's in Lambeau. Still wouldn't be a bad one to go to. I would say that. I would say that. Rams being a solid team, now with Stafford, an old divisional rival, I think that would be a good matchup. I'm interested, you know, you see the Bengals on the schedule. Interested to see how Joe Burrow comes back. He's got a new weapon there. And Jamar Chase. Record-wise, Tyler, again, if Rodgers plays, there's no reason they shouldn't be able to win thir at least 13 games for the third season in a row, especially with an extra game. I, I was looking at the other uh, the other day. I'd say 13-4, and four, probably realistically, wouldn't be surprised with a 14-3. and three. I feel like that's a fair assessment of if Rodgers plays. Now, is there... Because I said I might be going to the, the Pittsburgh versus Raiders game in Pittsburgh. Is there any games that you plan on going to as a Packers fan? Yeah, I mean, you know, my co-owner, uh, compadre, <laughs> El Jefe, and I were been, you know, exchanging a few texts. He shot out uh, Browns on Christmas, which I thought would be pretty sweet. That would be an amazing game. That would be crazy. Couldn't, couldn't Where's picture it at, Lambo? Christmas. It's in Lambeau. It's going to be snowy. I mean, Santa Claus might be out there with his ho-ho-hos. I mean, both teams, too, very good in cold weather. So, right. you know, it's not going to be like, oh, L.A.'s coming into Lambeau. You know, they, they're going to play down. No, both these teams are ready. Yeah, I'd say that or the, the Rams games would probably be too... Although, 11-28, one's Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> should that week. I, yeah, I'm not going to, I mean, I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm not going to do anything for Thanksgiving. I'm out here on my own. I'm just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot, of, a lot of games I think would be good ones to see. We'll see. Obviously, a huge question mark on this season right now, Tyler. But I, I don't know. I, I Like, this could be me being I'm a little overly optimistic, but we were talking, was it, was it on the podcast last week how I mentioned Bortles made it to the AFC Championship game with the Jags? So it's like you got a better team around him in Green Bay. But that know. dude was playing out of his mind that year. But like, less he, hair, a little more dad muscles. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> I, I love Blake Bortles more than anybody. I name all my fantasy teams after after Blake Bortles. Yeah. I love that guy. I just I don't think he's the same player that he was that year specifically with the Jags. So yeah. unless he proves me wrong, which I hope he does, because I think the NFL is a better place with Blake Bortles playing, I'll be I'll be happy to be wrong. Um, but let me ask you this: If Aaron Rodgers doesn't play for the Packers, big if, obviously, what's their record? Hmm. Ten and seven. Wow, you're still giving him a winning record. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Now, why are you giving them a winning record? Because they're still strong in almost every other category. They re signed Aaron Jones. They re signed Bakhtiari. They still have Devontae for another season. Uh, they, they, they helped their second biggest issue on defense with that secondary corner when they drafted Stokes. If they have a, a semi competent inside linebacker, they have a top 10 defense. Obviously. Yeah, but say but say they, they trade with the Broncos, and the, the pick that they're saying that they could swap is Aaron Rodgers for Sertan. Then you have an even better perennial corner that's a shutdown corner. Eh, I mean, it's yet to be seen. I, I'm not upset with Stokes. You know, SEC guy. I love, I love players that are drafted from, you know, the, the mini NFL, if you want to call it that. The SEC, those guys are playing top-tier competition every single game. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Tyler, if they're if they're not saying much on Jordan Love because they don't want the good stuff to get out, or he's really just you know a while a while a ways back in his progression. But yeah, I think they can easily get ten games. 
I mean, they get six free wins against their division. All they got to do is... How many other games they got there? Uh, 11? They got to win four out of 11? I think they can do that easily. I mean, I feel like you're being a little harsh on your own division. I could even see the Bears pulling off an upset against the Packers. Yeah. Remember the last time the Bears drafted a quarterback in the first round? They thought he was going to answer all their problems. What Although they, <laughs> they did say that uh, Justin Fields scored the highest IQ uh, quarterback test in NFL history in the pre-draft, whatever they do. They test him. He scored a 130. Pat Mahomes scored a 110. Wow. So he's going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick is what you're saying then. <laughs> he's going to play well hey, for the starting quarterback when he's hurt. Ryan Fitzpatrick. That motherfucker took out my playoff hopes last year. So, I mean, he could do the same to you. Take out your playoff hopes this year. Talk shit now on Ryan Fitzpatrick, my guy. Yeah, that's he's one of those guys. I feel like he's probably come up with some kind of special device that somehow can do things that you don't want him to be done, but he's Fitzpatrick, and he's got Fitz magic, and he does them. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. But, yeah, I, that's what I say. I mean, it, it's interesting, though, Tyler. I don't know if we're going to keep talking about this, but... How big of an issue this was, right? A couple weeks ago, what have we heard in the past week about Rodgers? Nothing. You know, That's Packers, scary. Packers, excuse I'd rather me? Hear something than What's nothing. the saying? No news is good news, right? I mean, they offered him the long term deal, and just like that, Schefter, Schefter's fifth phone died, and he's not getting any more updates. I don't know. I feel like in this situation, if if there's no news, then I would be kind of curious to see what's going on. But, I mean, you want to get into to no something shit. other than sports? I do. I was going to segue to that. Go take it away. I mean, I decided uh, me and Austin collaborated on kind of a mix between Ty- Tyler's Two Minutes versus Austin's Weekly Winners. And something other than sports is our new topic we're, we're going to spend, you know, five to ten minutes talking about something other than sports. Um, pretty self-explanatory. J. Cole came out with his newest studio album in, what, six years? Has it been that? Was it, what was the last one? Was it uh, Four Soul uh, Drive? Oh, or, KOD. Yeah. yeah, so he came out with his new studio. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Now, he also signed a deal with a African pro basketball team, which is pretty dope. But, you know, before his album came out, obviously did that. Then his album came out, dropped probably one of my favorite J. Cole albums of all time of any of his work from start to finish. I would have to say it's definitely my favorite. What are your thoughts? Huh. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go as far as say it's my favorite. Obviously something that comes out. If, if you can come out with something and it's, good enough to to listen to like i I don't know how i want to put this but you know like you kind of switch it up a little bit tyler a lot of people have repetitive sounds repetitive songs stuff of that nature he definitely came out with something new that i can bump to and enjoy I, i wouldn't go as far as saying it's my favorite but it's a very good very good project now tyler you mentioned the basketball league i think j cole has some stake in this league if i'm not mistaken right you might be right. I'm not sure. So, question for you. Quick question. Is there any relationship between the album, the timing of it, and him playing overseas? Is this album to promote the basketball league? Was him playing professional basketball to promote the album? What do you I think mean, is going on? I mean, I think so. I Both? mean, the, al- I, I... the album's called The Off Season. He's working on the album in the off season while training to be a professional basketball player in Africa. Yeah, his stat line was three points, three rebounds, two assists, or two (laughs) rebounds and three assists, but, you know... Five five farts on the bench. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) what's his face from Semi-Pro? Will Ferrell or Jackie Moon is his name? Jackie Moon, (laughs) player coach. I mean, it's not about how how many points he scored, it's about getting those dubs. And I'm pretty sure (laughs) his team picked up a dub. We haven't seen him do play and then perform a halftime show like Jackie Moon, but he was out there pregame listening to his own music and shots up. I mean, that's crazy, man. That's what everyone dreams of. All the yeah, hoopers I mean, want to be rappers. All the rappers want to be hoopers. And really, you know, you talk about 
multi-sport athletes, right? You got the Deion Sanders. You got the... Um, Bo Jacksons. Bo Jacksons, thank you. But as far as uh, an artist and an athlete... <laughs> Never. I'm, I'm thinking and nothing comes to mind. You know, you got yeah, Dame Lillard, but, I, you know... Uh, I guess I mean, he's like expect- the opposite of, da- you know... Right, you could say like, oh, these pro guys, you know, they rap, they make a few songs. Like Kobe even made a, a song. Shaq's made songs before. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily great. I mean, this is one of the greatest rappers, you know, of our, our common era right now. Going overseas and playing professional basketball. You know, obviously African Basketball League isn't a, a crazy, you know, commodity. They do have former NBA players, though, playing in it. I know his teammates, Ben Uzo, who I pretty sure played for the bulls i could be wrong but either way i think seeing something like this is just incredible you know you got to respect greatness yeah not a lot of big name guys over there but somehow they secured a uh, jordan brand deal because if you saw those jerseys <laughs> they got the jump those man jerseys are actually pretty hot i'm not gonna lie. Uh, yeah i liked them to be you know to be honest with you jersey but... sales for the patriots whatever team he plays for i know it's the patriots just going like this you know j cole jerseys number 15 out, out the racks Crazy, crazy. We'll see what happens. I, you know, Tyler, back in the few months ago, I guess we'll say, not back in the day, but he said he was going to make it in the NBA. I'm not sure if that's quite the case, but we'll see if maybe he starts to get his more game feel going on. They'll give him some more minutes, see what he can do. I mean, we've seen plenty of videos, Tyler, where he's at whatever, that compound in New York City, right, playing with NBA guys. He's got a sweet shot, but. Yeah. To, to make it to that next level, you got to have just un, unearthly athleticism, which I'm not sure if he possesses. Hey, if he, you know, he played ball at St. John's. If he had stuck with it, maybe, right? But he went a different route to leave for that long and be out of basketball shape and come back. I'm not sure if it's possible. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Two-part question. Favorite song on the new album and hmm. give me a rating, one through ten, on your thoughts on the off season? Uh, I mean, what is it? My life with Twenty One Savage. That's obviously a banger. Uh, flying the pressure. I mean, Cole's one of my guys. You know, um, I've been listening to him since his first mixtape came out. He was kind of one of those guys where I was the person that found him first and introduced him to other guys. So I always have that kind of feeling about him i'm i'm gonna rock with him regardless i'd probably say applying the pressure but i mean every song is is good this, i'm not skipping anyone right and what would you rate the whole entire album uh solid 8.3 okay solid See, start I'd to finish it, i'd give an 8.8 i feel like all oh. all the songs on there like you said are solid but the lyricism on there is what really gets me um just listening to it focusing on the lyrics because J. Cole is one of the best lyricists of our day. Um, <clears throat> but my favorite, 95 South, 100%, you know, with Killer Cam in it. That song just, oh. for, to have that song as the first song, just blaring the radio, just bumping, and then they're just like at the end chanting. I mean, that's just a, a good ass song. Probably definitely my favorite, one of my favorite J. Cole songs now, I would have to say too. Bro, I uh, that was such blue balls though when I heard Cam and then he's you know he's talking I'm like oh shit you got you got Killer Cam on here but he's just doing some some talking and ad libs he didn't get a verse St- still cool though to have him 100 percent I don't think Killer Cam could spit a, a verse like he used to though I don't know you'd be surprised he, yeah he's one of those guys though he doesn't even try he's like I did my thing you know I'm. I'm getting residuals and all this money from all my old shit. I don't even need to try. You know, I don't want to tarnish my name or my career at all. So he's, he's smart. I mean, he probably looked at what Lil Wayne did and was like, all right, I do not want to make that like rock star album that right. Lil Wayne did. Not like obviously a rock star album, but like an album that that performed so poorly compared to what the other albums have done. And yeah. I mean, at some point you just got to know when it's time to hang up, hang it up, you know? Yeah. No when to walk away. What's that song? No when to hold them. <laughs> no when to fold them. Yep. No that... when to walk away. I don't know who sings yeah. that. I'm not even going to guess because it's probably going to be completely wrong. Right. Johnny Walker. I, I was going to say uh, John Denver. 
George Strait George, or something. I think you're right. I think it is John Denver. Wait, wait, wait. Let, <laughs> the cool thing about Apple Music is you could type in lyrics. No, when. Oh, it's Kenny Rogers. The game. Oh, that would I make a lot of sense. <laughs> All right, that's all we got. Five hundred three right now, Tyler. Danny NASCAR coming up next. Who? Five hundred three. I mean, or eight? You know, god damn it! Get me all messed up here. Five hundred three on my side. Eight hundred three ESD. Anyways, if there's anything that Austin can't get right, it's 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 names in general, and now it's the time. This guy is fighting time, and he's fighting names. Well, I got to think of it from two different perspectives. It's like sometimes I'll say the East Coast time to someone here on the West Coast and then vice versa for, you know, obviously Insane Games, the East Coast platform. So I'm looking at my clock here, not thinking anything of it. 803 ESC. That reminds me, though. Yeah. We're going to keep this going just a little bit longer. Danny NASCAR said that why does Austin have to wear a bald cap when he's already bald? <laughs> what is your statement well, to I, that? I, I was—I thought we were gonna wait until we got him. We're on the same place. I mean, I don't think we're gonna be in the same place anytime soon. So obviously, it's got to be between brands. I, I mean, I, an old podcast isn't gonna hold back from you know a cigar aficionado <laughs> wannabe who has a fucking stack of fucking cigars in a pack looking like he's collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, I I I mean shit, now you got me all hyped up talking about this and that. I mean, I I don't know, what are we talking about here? My wig, my wig ain't looking uh too real today, I guess, Tyler. Got the fake hair going on. I mean, you can see the hairline clearly. You know, if I was Danny's, I'd have it uh what are we what are we thinking here? <laughs> Ah, uh, there. His, there. his shit's starting to look like where you'd put a yarmulke, his hairline going back there. I mean, <laughs> you, you got on the side, right, where it kind of comes out and comes down and curves. His shit just looks like a straight road. It goes straight down. It's like some guy accidentally tried to connect his sideburns to the top of his, his hairline. Like a mean <laughs> fade, but, I mean, that's just the way it is. Looks like someone got, when he was getting a haircut, they got a level out, and it's just completely <laughs> parallel with where his earlobe is. <laughs> they, got, they got the ruler out to fucking <laughs> to trim the edges. <laughs> like he was trying to hang up a fucking mirror or something. Golly. Dane NASCAR, <laughs> don't come at me listen i i got some some stuff we can get into but i wanted to wait till we we're on the same platform it's fine i mean they're talking about like i'm taking shots at him other than speculating at his you know premarital sex life everything else i stated was facts right if right. we're saying he owns a video game store the league commissioner. I wasn't taking shots at him saying it's a bad thing. I was just saying that's what he does, right? I don't know. Danny Nascar, what do you got to say? Because you're awfully quiet. That's all I have to say. I'm not a... <laughs> I don't stir the pot. That's what he says. <laughs> yeah. Lie. And then And then he, like... I was watching it for a little bit last week. I, I don't instigate nothing, right, Mike? He, he says something like... Stop. I don't even know. I'm not going to try to reiterate what he's saying. He's got his own thing going on. And he's about to have it going on right now. I got uh, The NASCAR fans are probably lining up. Starting their engines ready to go. So Let's go, <laughs> racer boys! <laughs> Danny NASCAR, it's been another episode of No Look. I'm back. Tyler, let's see if I can get this right. 11 EST, 8 PST, my time for Monday Night Gaming. Till then.